In the previous video, we went over the sequence task, and now we're going to go over the selector task, which is basically the counterpart to the sequence task. You can download this scene, uh, which is contained within the Behavior Designer Tutorials folder from the link within the description of this video. So this video will just use this one tree and will basically go in in-depth into what the selector task does. The selector task can be thought of as an OR task in that it will keep playing its children until one returns success. So if wait returns failure, this first wait returns failure, this next wait returns failure, and then this final wait returns success, the selector task will return success because one of its children returns success. So let's go ahead and hit play, and it's going to be pretty boring what happens in that this just this very first wait plays because it returned a status of success. If we add a decorator called return failure, we'll make it a little bit more exciting because we will now have two different tasks that return a status of failure and then that means that this final wait task should play. So this first wait task is going to hit play. It's going to return it's going to return success, but because this return failure decorator is going to change the status, it will then return fail, will return failure. Because this selector task, the first child task returned a status of failure, it will then play the next child task, which in this case is this wait task, and a similar situation where because return failure returned failure, it will then play the third task. When wait returns success, it will then return success and the task will complete. Let's go ahead and add one more return failure just so all the children tasks are return, returning failure and then that will show that the selector task will return failure at the very end if none of the child tasks return success. Similar to the sequence task you can add a parent that's a selector and it will, it will work in a very same way. In fact, if you have two different selectors, one child, one parent, you might as well just group them into one because it's, it's doing the same thing. So let's go ahead and hit play, and we'll have this wait task return success. So I'd expect by the end of this, this, sele this selector will return success, but this will return failure, and that's what happened. So now we'll go ahead and make this one return failure. So none of these tasks will return success or none of the selectors will return success. A really common design pattern in behavior trees is to have selectors sequences. Selectors sequences. So let's go ahead and change this to a, actually let's undo that. Let's change this to a sequence task. So now what's going to happen is this is actually very similar to the example scene from the very overview video but what's going to happen is that well there we go now I got to set up this very first task so the behavior trees evaluate from top to bottom left to right the selector task is first going to play which will then play its first leftmost child which is the sequence task the sequence task will then play its leftmost child which is the wait task this wait task is going to return success, which means that the next child, this wait task right here, will all then play. Because of this return failure decorator, the sequence task is going to return failure. And then the selector task, because the very first child returned failure, it's then going to keep playing its children until one returns success. So then this wait task will play. And the wait task will finally return success and then the selector did return success as well. So let's add one more level to the hierarchy and we'll, we'll just kind of show that this sequence task will then play this final wait task because the selector returned success. So there we go. Had the selector returned failure, which we can do by adding this return failure task, this sequence task would not have returned success, or the selector task would return failure, so this sequence task is going to return failure as well.
So there we go. And that's a pretty basic overview of how the selector task works.